This is Amstark, in this video we are looking at sampling. So sampling is an alternative method to carrying out a census and it can be extremely useful. So first of all, there's some key terminology that we need to know in the first part and then for the second part. So a parameter is the number that describes the whole population. So this is taken from a census. And then a statistic, though, is a number taken from a single sample, and this will therefore be taken from a sample. So a census is a collection of every data point within the population, and although it gives an accurate view of a population, it is also time-consuming and expensive. In some cases, it is also unfeasible. So for example, if you're testing products, you can't test every single product, especially if by testing them, you're having to break them. Now a sample is where you just take a few points, and this is taking a certain number of points from a population. Now it is less time consuming, and it is also cheaper than a census, yet it can give a misleading view of a population. So you could end up with a lot of outliers, and that would give an, a misleading view of the population or of the whole amount. So here we have a question, and it says a, a conservationist is interested to know the maximum height that various species of trees reach in their country's forests. So they choose a random forest and measure the heights of all trees there. So we have to identify the population, the parameter, the sample, and the statistic in this situation. So we'll start off with the population. And if we remember, the population is everything. So this means that the population is going to be the trees. Now they are wanting to interest to know the maximum height uh, that various species of trees reach in their country's forests. So trees in their country's forests. Now this is because it is the whole population. This is what they're interested in knowing. So that means that that is going to be the population. Now the parameter, if we see here, it's a number that describes the whole population. Now they are wanting to find out the maximum height. So therefore, that's going to be the maximum height of trees, of the trees in countries' forests. So we're using that population because this is a, a number that describes the whole population. And as the population is the country, trees in the country's forests, it's simply the max height of the trees in the country's forests. Then a sample, and this is taking a certain number of points from the population. And we can see that his sample here is about using a random forest. So this means that it's going to be trees in the forest. And this is because he measures the heights of all trees there. So finally we have statistic and statistic here is a number taken from a single sample. The sample is the trees in the forests so therefore our statistic is going to be max height of trees in the sample. So there are lots of different sampling methods that we can use and we're going to go through five of them today. So the first one here is simple random sampling. And simple random sampling is the idea that every member has an equal probability of being chosen. So for example, everybody is given a number and then random numbers are used to choose a sample of the desired size. So you could use a random number generator, choose a random as everyone in the group has a random number, therefore you choose that particular person. So completely random. The next one is stratified sampling. So this is where the population is split up into groups and a proportional representation of the different groups is selected. 
So for example, if you wanted to split things up into age, you could split a group up into age. So you would ha might have a group of 18 to 25 year olds. And if there was about 20 um, 18 to 25 year olds, but only four uh, 60 to 65 year olds say, then you would take a higher amount of people of the, 20, uh, of the 18 to 25 year olds in your sample. And that is the idea of a proportional representation. The next one here is systematic sampling. And for systematic sampling, you have to find a sample of size n from a population of n, a, a uppercase n. So then select one member from the first k members at random and select every kth member after that. So k is equal to big N over small n. So for example, if we had a, a population of 300 um, and we were wanting a sample size um, of around 50, say, then we could take k would equal 6. So therefore, what we would do is we would choose one member randomly from that first six, maybe using a, a random number generator. We could get, say, the, the third person, and then we would take every sixth person after that. So we get three, nine, 15, and so on. So that's another way, very sim uh, similar to simple random sampling. Then two slightly different ones, we have opportunity sampling. And this is where you take samples of a population that you have access to until you have a sample of the desired size. So for example, if you were waiting and wanted to do a sample of people in school, you could just stand at the gates of school and as people walked in, they would be part of your sample. So it's literally, as the name says, opportunity sampling. If people come along, that's the people you ask. Now, quota sampling is fairly similar. However, in this one, you have split the population up into groups and then using opportunity sampling, a certain number from each group is chosen in any order. So in other words, you are splitting it up. You could split it up into to boys and girls, for example. And then when a boy walks in, then that is your a person you would use uh, until you exceed, you have the maximum amount that you need of boys. And then you do the same for girls. So this one here, we have two questions and we have to decide which type of sampling method it, um, this person has chosen and the same for this one here. And this one says that Kwame wants to investigate how much time year seven student in his school spent playing sport. So he gets a list of year seven students and selects every fifth student on the list to add to his sample. Write down the name of the sampling method that Kwame has chosen. So for this one, it's going to be systematic sampling. Now we know this because this is the idea of selecting every fifth student, and this is the idea of every kth member. So in this, k is just five, and then he's just choosing every fifth student. So that is why this particular one is systematic sampling. The next one here, is saying that Frank wants to find out how much time uh, students in his school spend listening to music. So he asked students entering the school until he has asked 25 boys and 25 girls. Write down the name of the sampling method Frank has chosen. So for this one, it's either going to be between opportunity sampling or quota sampling because it's this idea of being opportun uh, opportunistic um, and asking them when they're entering the school. However, because it is specifically said that about 25 boys and 25 girls, this means that this one is going to be quota sampling. And that is because the population has been split into groups. Now, if there's only two, uh, two groups, it still has been split into groups. So that is why we're using quota sampling here and not opportunity sampling. So our final question of the day says that there are 550 students in a school and they all study either French or German or Spanish. So here we have a table saying that the language French, there are 181 students who study French. For Spanish, there are 146 students. And for German, there are 223 students. And this all equals up to 550. And that's because they all study French or German or Spanish. So an inspector decides to take a sample of 40 students stratified by the language they study. 
So by the stratified, we're looking at the idea of proportional representation. So in this 40 students, it will be proportional to the amount of students who study French, Spanish and German. So therefore, there will be the most amount of German students and the least amount of Spanish students. So this one asks, calculate the number of students who study German in the sample. So first of all, we have to work out the proportion of students who study German. And that's very easy to do. All it's going to be is 223 over 550. So that is our percentage there. We don't need to simplify it as this is simply just going to be going into our calculator soon. But then we have to look at this sample of 40 students. And as it's going to be proportional representative, then this is going to be 223 over 550. That shall be times by 40. And then that is going to equal 16.218. Now, of course, we cannot leave our answer like this, but you can't have 16.2 of a person. So therefore, we either have to round up or round down. In this case, we're going to round down because obviously 16.2 rounds to just 16. So therefore, there are 16 students who are studying German in this sample of 40. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.